Well, well, well. Good evening, or good afternoon, North America. Good evening, Europe. Uh, I am taking over for my North American pals on the week ahead video this week. Normally, I just take care of the European Open, but here I am, the week ahead. So let me go through some of the things that we're talking about and some of the things that we find important here. Uh, first and foremost, let me look at equities. Uh, pretty interesting, bullish week. Last week. Gotta say... Uh, this 200 day up here at 2740 looks very, very daunting, and we are not, 100% not, on board with this whole bull trend here. We do think this is going to turn. Could be trade, could be earnings, uh, could be Trump. Uh, don't know, but we're getting to this stretched point. But with equities, they often stretch a little bit more than people would like them to stretch. Let's just look back at this December high here. The gap opened to 27.87. We printed to 28.12, and then bam. So we're just looking, if you were just to circle this 200-day and say between 27.35 and 27.65, uh, we are sellers and even on an intraday basis, we are core short, as in we're selling to buy to resell. We're not selling to sell for a 10% move. We're selling to buy to resell to get a better average. We're basically more emphasis on the sell side, but we're tactically trading it from here on out. When we get up to 2740 or 2750 or 60, then we will just be sell and hold. So this is this is what we're looking at here. Uh, you gotta say that uh, the numbers on uh, Friday, even though average hourly earnings came in a little bit lower than expected, we're still talking about three percent average hourly earnings upside uh, on the year. This is not bad. It's moderately inflationary, uh, and so. Bonds finally turned right hand side. You see, this is the long bond here. We're always looking to sell this. Um, and we have a core short it's from the beginning of the year on this. Uh, this confirmed bearish sentiment printed this 145.28 level here, which will be interesting. It's a pivot and uh, should provide more downside this next week. If we look at the weekly candle, let's see, moderately bullish, but that tail is a worry. So we're going to first have a look at this 145.28, see if it confirms. And what we think is going to happen, uh, this is going to tip and move left. What does that mean for currencies? First and foremost, we look at this euro chart it's right in the middle of everything here on the weeklies but on the dailies you can see this is the Wednesday and Thursday move up to 115.15 back down a little bit of a scare down to 114.37 and we printed down there again there's obviously going to be stops and risk below this area on Monday, Tuesday, this will get done. Does it hold down there? We think it does, so you got to be core short euros. Um, but at the minimum, it's going to trade there, uh, and so you got to keep that in mind. Our number one uh, trade of the week this week is dollar Swiss topside, um, with equities likely to stay sort of floaty and not turn immediately. Rates going higher. Uh, Dollar Swiss has upside, and now we have this 99.90 or sort of parity one double O level, which is starting to scream, uh, scream at us on the charts. So there will be CTA risk up here. Obviously, this is this is my background, being a 
ex-currency hedge fund guy. I know what these guys are thinking. I know what these guys are doing. Uh, there will be risk above 99, 95, or 10001. This will attract in the foreign exchange market. So we like core long dollar Swiss. Very easy kill switch here through 9905, 200 day, and now triple bottom here on the dollar. What else? What else we got here? We got some Brexit news. Well, we have Brexit news and Brexit unnews. Basically, uh, you know, May is determined to deliver Brexit on time. This is the FT headline over the weekend. Blah, blah, blah. What we do see here is this sort of confluence of daily lows on, on the dailies from last week that coincide with the 200 day. We were talking about this last week about being a trapdoor. We, stu we still do believe this is a trapdoor. We're hoping it doesn't go now at the open. Um, and I haven't pulled up my liquidity yet. Normally I usually wait another hour. Um, and especially on Super Bowl night, there's going to be even less interest to trade. But it does look like cable is going to trade through this 130.47 and at least take us down to this level. Uh, 130.04, 129.90. I do believe they're going to resolve Brexit, believe it or not. Um, so even if you're trading this, it's just hit and run. Marry nothing in sterling. Just grab cash whenever and as soon as you can. Otherwise, don't even trade it because the headlines are, are, are too tricky and, and, and can be atrocious as far as liquidity and fills. But keep in mind, 130.47, uh, incredibly important 200 day, and Friday's low I think was 44. But if we get back down through 50 again, they're going to jam this thing lower. So, so keep in mind uh, with that. Let's talk about the Aussie. We got RBA uh, Tuesday morning early European time. Um, as I mentioned on Twitter likelihood they're going to be dovish, right? I mean, all this uh, BS about the housing market going to shit, and and I know it is going to shit. i got friends in Sydney who own houses there, and I hear them whine and complain about uh, the timing of their purchases, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but with this kind of like tsunami of media interest, uh, you would expect some sort of dovish bias from the RBA. And as I said on Twitter, the 200 day up here looks pretty safe, 72.94. So you kind of want to quietly sell high ones uh, over the first 24 hours here, and then maybe even leave entries on the downside over RBA in case they're overly bearish. So that's kind of your Aussie play. Looking deeper into the week, we do have Kiwi unemployment on Wednesday. We've got Powell also speaking on Wednesday. Bank of England has their assortment of bullshit on Thursday. Uh, inflation report, MPC bank rate, and the whole MPC policy summary announcement press conference. Uh, that can't be hawkish. I would say neutral to dovish, but relatively untradable, I mean. Brexit's the main theme. Um, and then we're light until Friday. We've got Canadian unemployment. Uh, no real bias or gauge as, as to how that's going to look. Um, we'll probably take a closer look at that on Wednesday. But going into the start of the week, um, we're looking for Euro downside, cable downside, and dollar Swiss upside. We are looking for risk off, but we're selling high ones, just trying to get a good average on our shorts, and we are looking to sell U.S. fixed income, because at the end of the day, non-farm payrolls was above 300,000 people. I mean, this is no reason to go neutral or dovish. This is a reason, you know, when your rates are on the two handle, I mean, if your rates are on the four or the five handle, fine, go neutral, go dovish, but your rates are on the two handle, uh, 
we think the market's got this wrong, and so we're going to see some upside in the dollar this week. Anyway, that's what I got for the week ahead. I will see you in in 12 hours for the European Open, which is more my forte. Uh, I wish you guys a good Super Bowl evening tonight. Go Patriots is our bias. As a kid who was born in New England, although I lived in Europe the last 20 years, so I don't care as much as I used to. Uh, we'll see what happens, and I will see you at the European Open tomorrow. Ciao.